welcome to Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you informed on everything that's happening in the world of faith and family films. Now, my guest today is another return guest. I've had him on the program before, and a couple of months, a couple of weeks ago, rather, you uh, saw that I had his wife, Sam, also a return guest. Uh, so this is very, very exciting for me. Let me give you uh, Kevin's uh, bio here. In 1993, Kevin emerged as a full-fledged international TV star when he was cast as the lead role in Hercules in a series of TV films that will lay the groundwork for the immensely popular series Hercules. In 1987, um, Kevin accepted his first leading role in the fantasy action feature called The Conqueror. He, of course, is most known uh, and highly recognized as the Professor Radisson on the very successful faith-based film God's Not Dead. Now, it's been a while since God's Not Dead, and I know Kevin's done a lot of things. Kevin, welcome to Faith on Film, my friend. It has been a while. It's good to be back. It's weird to think that that movie came out six years ago already. You know, it just wow. it goes by so fast. And and you're right. I have probably shot about twenty to twenty four movies <laughs> roughly since then. So oh, I see. So you like to take it easy. <laughs> I hate taking it easy. This this thing's driving me crazy right now. This COVID thing because I I've had two movies that were lined up back to back that now got yeah. pushed to the fall. But I've already got another project, TV series, I'm shooting in the fall, so I probably won't get those movies now. And it affects all of us. It's frustrating for all of us. I get it. <sighs> yeah, I know it is. Never in a million years where I imagined we would have no. been in this kind of situation. But here we are, and actually we're going to be talking about a movie that um, I think is probably perfect for this time that we're facing right yeah. now. But before we even get into that, how about you give us a, uh, an update on Miracle of East Texas? Because I know that's one we promoted the first time you were on. Yeah, you know, Miracle in East Texas, we were hoping to get it out by, by the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, all the theaters are closed now. So, But we do have a company out of uh, Canada that's going to uh, be uh, getting us into theaters distribution-wise mm -hmm. and through uh, uh, all of America and Canada as well. Uh, the trouble is, you know, we're... We're a wonderful little movie with a great message, but we're going to have to compete against all those big $300 million movies that got pushed to the fall as well. And they're all going to take up 4,000 screens each. So um, we're have to see what happens, what we're going to, how we're going to make this thing work. But we're excited. Mm -hmm. People love it. Before this thing kicked in about, you know, don't go out and, and say hi to anybody because you'll <laughs> die of a disease. Um, um, I, uh, I, shot, I screened it in Branson, Missouri. Mm -hmm. In front, I've been doing a film festivals with it, and people have loved it. But we did it in front of a so-called regular audience. It wasn't an audience. It wasn't a film festival audience. Uh -huh. And boy, standing ovation. I did an hour Q and A afterwards. Uh -huh. It was great response from people. It's a lovely film, and I'm very excited to eventually get it out in the theaters. Uh, well, you know, we certainly can't wait. I felt really bad for the folks that were releasing that movie. Um, the ones that did, I can only imagine. Uh, I still believe. Oh, the yeah, Brothers. the Irwin Brothers, right. because that movie literally was releasing that very week, and it just, yeah. you know, it, it just changed, changed the dynamic of what they were doing. But Gary Sinise, the buddy of mine, he's in mm -hmm. that movie, and I'm hoping they find a way to, I mean, they've already spent money on distribution yeah. for us. So I, I don't know what they're going to do. I, I know they're they're building studios now in Nashville, and um, I'm hoping they come up with a game plan to get it back out there. And I'm sure I'm sure they will. They're smart guys. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. So now, you're promoting a movie right now. That, well, it's, it's a documentary. Uh, and what I was told that is that it was, it was just very applicable to really what's going on right now. Can you start sharing this with us a little bit about what this movie's about? Well, it's Before the Wrath. People can go mm -hmm. to beforetherath.com to check out all kinds of information. They can get the DVD now. They can go to Amazon. It was, it was a number one documentary on Amazon for, I think, three straight weeks. We're in our fourth week now. I still think they're in the top five, oh, wow. which is pretty amazing. Um, it's it's a wonderful documentary. What I love about it, it's like, almost like a movie and a documentary in mm -hmm. one because the movie part is – uh, they, they go back 2,000 years in the time of Jesus, and they have the characters and the actors portray this this wedding that's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's almost called, it's like a um, prophecy chick flick is almost what the movie, okay. this documentary is. <laughs> um, but it, then you have these scholars and these, these well-known apologists, and people talk about the second coming. And you're finding out that so many people really don't believe in that second coming any longer. And this is it's a lot of the a lot of the evidence they're pulling out of is out of the book of Matthew. And it's quite it's it's incredibly educational, I found. 
And so I hope people, uh, obviously I don't have to hope, people have found this thing to be amazing comfort, especially during this time. My church itself, the one I left, it was in 10 years in LA, I've moved to Florida mm -hmm. in the last year, but I still watch uh, my pastor on streaming. And mm -hmm. of course he's not streaming to nobody in there. Um, you can go to a liquor store, but don't go to church. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes no <laughs> sense. It's craziness. But anyway, he his streaming, now five times more people than actually our members at the church are watching his streaming. So people are freaking out and they're looking for answers. Mm -hmm. And I think I think some wonderful things are going to come out of this uh, quarantine phase we're going through now. And, but eventually we got to get back to life and le living life. And uh, but I hope people during this time will watch before the wrath because I think there's an, an amazing parallel to what's happening in the world right now. And uh, the educational value alone of this, I think, will really touch people's hearts. Yeah, you know, you, you said something about, uh, you know, the amazing things maybe will come out of this uh, quarantine. And not to diminish the, the deaths that have occurred, the people that have no, lost their jobs. Not. But I think a lot of opportunities are actually, it, it's almost like the playing field of, uh, of church is being leveled, in essence. Uh, you know, a lot of these churches are now streaming, churches that weren't streaming before, now they're finding themselves streaming. And so we're actually, I think, reaching a lot more people than we used to, even just getting them into the building. Yeah, I think there's no question. I, I, I think just the fact that they're doing it now, and as you mentioned, the ones that weren't doing it before, mm -hmm. they're going to keep doing it. Yeah. Because the setup is there now. They have the capabilities to do it. They'll still fill up their churches, and I think they'll fill them up even more. Some people are intimidated to go to a church. They feel like, oh, these Christians are going to attack me. And say, oh, come do this, come do that. This is a way for them to feel safe by sitting in their own home, in their own office, in their living room, bedroom, wherever they are. And they can watch and hear for themselves without feeling the pressure they think they're going to get. When the reality, would they, get to, they would just get people that would love on them and, and say, welcome and thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people, a lot of my, a lot of my atheist friends and agnostic friends have an argument, in some cases is kind of true, where... As Christians, we think that we're we're like entitled more, or maybe that we're uh, we're actually less forgiving, and that's what people tell me. And we should be the most forgiving people on the planet. But a lot of times, we judge people, and we shouldn't be judging people the way we do. We should be looking for the log in our own eye instead of going after other people. And I think the church needs to learn, learn a lesson by that. I'm hoping that I'm hoping they will during this time. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick break right now and come back and take a look at a trailer from, uh, from the movie and, and maybe talk a lot about it a little bit more, right? So folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Encourage TV. Family-friendly and faith-friendly content absolutely free. Subscribe today and watch hundreds of hours of content on our streaming channels. Visit EncourageTV.com today. Seriously, Dad, I want to go. I told you, it's not that big. Great Granddaddy couldn't even fit right. That thing's not to scale. It's a cartoon. The real one's bigger than a football field. For real? Come on, you don't even have to pay for me. Kids are free. All right, all right. Can't be that big. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Told you, Dad. You just gotta think bigger.
Welcome back to Faith on Film. We're here with uh, with Kevin Sorbo, who is uh, part of a movie right now that the distribution company felt it was perfect for this time uh, that we find ourselves right now with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Kevin, let's, let's take a quick look at the trailer and then uh, come back and maybe you can talk to us a little bit more about how this will really, you know, you, you mentioned something about people not believing anymore that, uh, that the second coming is happening. I, I've read that even church people don't believe that anymore. Yeah. So maybe you can just share a little bit more about you know, how, how this maybe will, will change that perception. So roll the trailer. As Galileans, we witnessed his first miracle. He warned us that a time of great deception would come. But we must hold on to our faith that one day he would return to save us from the end of the world. Most people don't believe that Jesus is coming back. What if there was evidence that proves that this is all real? Because there were so many people bringing up little bits and pieces of this. I'm thinking, there's got to be a pattern here. The Bible talks about it as being a mystery, but why does the rapture have to happen? What's the point to it all? A Galilean would have understood that perfectly. They are the key to everything. I'm just so stunned. I never thought I would see this in my lifetime. This is the most profound discovery in human history. Well, it does look like a very, uh, very well done movie. First of all, it's, it's a docudrama. I think that was that was yeah. what we were looking for. It's a docudrama. I it's got, of course, the, the dramatic reenactments, and then it's got the the experts yeah. talking about it. Uh, how did you get involved in this project? You know, Brent Miller, who uh, directed it and put this whole thing together with his team, uh, came to me, um, and I'm sure it's off the success I've had with mm -hmm. movies like What If, God's Not Dead, Abel's Field, and and Let There Be Light. Uh, movies people should be watching during this time when they're stuck at home. Um, I, I, I'm sure that was the reason why, and I was honored to be part of it. Mm -hmm. I narrated. The only thing I got mad at Brent about, and I said, you know, in that in that trailer, you don't even put my voice in there at all. And I'm actually in there quite a bit, quite a bit. <laughs> you won't hear my you won't hear my voice in the trailer. Um, I'm not on camera on this. I just narrated it, but I was honored to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, th I think, you know, as fear consume consumes the world right now, mm -hmm. I think, as you mentioned earlier, the timing for this to come out is, uh, is perfect. And I think um, you, mentioned, you mentioned something, too, where a lot of people don't believe anymore. Yeah. Um, and at the percentage wise, the vast majority of people do not. Even people of, people of faith have, don't think Jesus is coming back. And that's weird. And I think a lot of that comes on the shoulders of the pastors out there as well. I think we, we need to get back to understanding apologetics. We need to get back to understanding um, you know, the book of Revelation as well. Uh, we need to get back to understanding the Bible, and people sometimes hmm. get away from that, and I think churches are doing the same thing. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, and I'm probably going to get pastors mad at me right now, but... Oh, of but, course. <laughs> does, it, does it seem like, yeah, like they're getting away from, from preaching some of these truths and, and getting a little more into just the, the positive message of things? I mean, it, is that kind of what's well, happening? You know, you know, the anger out there right now, we have so much anger in the world, so much hatred. Mm -hmm. And I look at the Internet, and even though we're doing this now, and I think this is a positive thing, the Internet is still the Wild West. And a lot of people feel very brave in the comforts mm -hmm. and confines of their own home. And they can reach out with their own hatred for themselves and put that on other people. I mean, I can post it's a beautiful day, and I'll get people on my website going, <laughs> I hope you die. You know, so... It's incredible to me, and I, I don't, I don't, I, it doesn't bother me because their hate towards me doesn't affect my life. It affects their own life, and it just makes them spiral into a deeper, deeper black hole of anger and hatred. It's, it's a waste of time. But pastors, there's so much political correctness that is, that is so crazy that they're afraid of offending their congregation. Mm -hmm. I love what my pastor back in, in Los Angeles says. He says, I try to uh, work my congregation to a manageable size. <laughs> so politics and religion do come together. You can say all you want about separation of church and state. And he, by the way, that's not in the Constitution. And by the way, Jefferson wrote that to keep government out of the church. And somehow right. our wonderful political system was able to switch that around. 
the whole idea was to leave church alone and leave government alone, but government and church, are, our laws are based on the Bible. This country was founded on Judeo-Christian values. It's as simple as that. You, yeah. can, you don't have to be a, a person of faith to look at the Ten Commandments and look at those as laws. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Those are pretty good rules. You know? So uh, it, it's crazy what's going on in not only our country, but the whole world right now. Yeah. Now, would you say that uh, there's a, a, a segment in the, in the government, let's say, that is right now using this pandemic thing sort of in a way to try to really squash the church? And the reason I say that oh, yeah. is because... You know, you can't you, you you can't go to church. They they don't want people right now congregating in church, uh, but yet you can. I mean, I go to Walmart and it's full of people. Nobody's looking there to see you take down license plates of who's here right now because you're not supposed to be there. I mean, it, it seems like it's the that they. I even heard that one one uh, state was uh, telling people not to even. I mean, they were going to literally imprison them or fine them for yeah. driving churches. I mean, it seems, I this seems to be going against the church. There's something going on. And I'm not poo-pooing mm -hmm. this virus. It's real. It's there. But so is the flu. The flu affects mm -hmm. 60 million people a year and kills 60 to 80,000 people a year. Every year. Are we wearing masks all the time for that? Look, I'm, like I said, I'm not one. People are going to come after me now. Look, I'm not saying this virus isn't real and it's yeah. not hurting people. It's horrible. It's hurt, hurting people's lives. But the insanity of arresting people that are sitting in their car giving them tickets giving, uh, I saw a video recently of a woman being arrested in front of her children because mm -hmm. she was at a park with them on a swing. There was a kid out on one of those wakeboards that the, the, the Coast Guard or whatever, the patrol went up and arrested him for being out there. Who's he close to besides sharks out in the water? I mean, it's insanity yeah. what's going on right now. And yes, I really think there's a segment of the government that's using this as a political tool to gain more mm -hmm. control over all of our lives. And it's unbelievable and it's disgraceful and it's disgusting. And we need to get back to our constitution because it's we yeah. the people. The people we put in office are the people we put in office to benefit us. And yet all they want to do is benefit themselves. Yeah. However, what, what we do, what we're involved in here in media, is actually very important because it is, uh, it is kind of affecting how people react. And, you know, they're looking at the media and, and they're, they're reacting based on what the media is telling them. Um, but this also opened up a great opportunity for us involved in, uh, in, in not just uh, news and, and, you know, documentaries, but also even in just dramatic films. Um, that I think could really make an impact in our in our culture. Um, to tell you what, I was I was just going to do two segments with you, but it, would you stick around and do a third segment here so that we can take a little break right now and come back and sure. talk about what sure. you're doing in the area of filmmaking? Sure. Terrific, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Dad. This is a lot of work. It, it might take us the entire weekend. You think this is rough? Try building one of the most massive wooden ships in history without modern tools. Go ahead, think bigger. Meet Will. Will wants to make a movie based in Bible times. No. Maybe a Western. Well, maybe an apocalyptic movie. A biblical era apocalyptic Western? That would be so original. 
But Will needs some sweet sets to bring it to life, and Will is 25,352 miles away from any of those sweet, sweet sets. Or so he thinks. Fortunately for Will, there is a solution. Introducing Capernaum Studios, your ticket to realistic locations and everything else you need to bring your period accurate story to life. Book a tour today, like Will, who is, um, yet to leave. Welcome back to Fake on Film. We're here with Kevin right now, and we were going to just do two segments, but you know, I didn't, I didn't want to take too much of his time, but this is just too <laughs> interesting, so I'm glad he's sticking around for a third segment. Kevin, so now, you know, aside from the, the seriousness of the, of the, you know, the, the government and, and all the, the way that they're really trying to suppress us, um, sure. we're involved in something that's more of entertainment. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you, you, do, you do films. Um, what, what opportunity do you think is there right now for us as, as uh, filmmakers uh, in this time in, in what's happening right now? Well, I think the response I got from Netflix when my movie, my last movie I directed came out a little over a year ago called Let There Be Light. Mm -hmm. It opened so well, it opened number two per screen average against a $300 million Thor Ragnarok movie. Netflix called me right away and said, Kevin, we see that there is an appetite out there for movies that you've been working on, that you've done and been part of in okay. one way or another, that have love, redemption, hope, without being cheesy, without forcing it down your throat, just having good stories with, you know, the quality in, in these movies are just as good as anything else out there. What's interesting about an adventure movie, you see these entire cities, like it's usually New York, 18 skyscrapers come down, you're going, oh, three million people just died, but we're not paying attention to that in the movie now, are we? So, <laughs> so um, we get so desensitized toward, toward all the violence. But I, I'm getting more and more people stop me now. It used to be because of Hercules and Andromeda. It's now because of God's Not Dead and Let There Be Light. People want more movies like this, that not only for them, but for their families. You know, I'm doing a thing called Cameo, where you leave these little messages to people. And right now, I'm getting so many every single day where people want to say, you know, uh, do you have any ins words of inspiration? Do you have any, you know, I just want to wish somebody a happy mm. birthday to be there with. I mean, people are looking for ways to reach out and touch and talk to other people in a positive way. And I try to leave messages that are fun and inspiring and uh, not negative. And there's just so much negativity out there. And I just wanted to get in the, I got involved as an actor because I want to touch people. Um, so again, if we take a look at this pandemic, not as this horrible thing that's happened to us, but rather as, something that's opened up some opportunities. I think we're going to come through with flying colors. Well, yeah, I see in the studios, I see in Netflix, Amazon, mm -hmm. all these places, they're all scrambling for content right now. They're mm -hmm. still buying content. I'm, I'm assuming you've got a lot of things uh, in the works so that when that mm -hmm. green light goes off, you're ready to take off, right? You know, I got I got the three movies. I've got I've got what we just mentioned with uh, Before the Wrath, but I also have another documentary called Climate Hustle Two. Okay. Another documentary called um, uh, bef uh, uh, My gosh, Against Senior the Tide. Moment. Against <laughs> the Tide with John Lennox. I interviewed John uh -huh. Lennox we, two weeks in Israel, three weeks in Oxford, England. He's an apologist, amazing guy, and I've got three movies coming out: um, The Mustard Seed. Um, uh, obviously, Miracle in East Texas and One Nation of God, and I've got about three movies and a TV series booked, ready to go, and I've got another another one I'm trying to put together that I want to direct. So I'm staying busy. That's fantastic. Now, if people want to just follow you so that they can remember all these things that you just mentioned right now, where would they go? The best place is KevinSorbo.net. Just go to KevinSorbo.net. I got all kinds of information on there. Um, they can get, to, I can send my book, True Strength, my latest book, True Faith, just came out as well. Uh, then go to yeah. the official, Kevin Sorbo official Facebook page. Make sure it's the official one because there's people pretending to be me posting uh, things that I would never post and I get in trouble for it. So just go to the official one. They'll still probably get in trouble, but I try to post things that are, that are humorous, but I also post the truth and some people and Jack Nicholson said, you can't handle the truth. Uh, yeah, that's true. Now, I notice you do post, because I do follow you, and you do post sometimes um, a lot more political type stuff. Sure. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> that gets you in a little trouble with some people, don't it? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, people get upset. And, it, it's, and I post truthful things, <laughs> yeah. the truth. and But people don't want to hear the truth. Um, <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, people want to rather live in the fake news world. But I, I post stuff and go, look, this is just a fact. I'm sorry to hit you up with the fact. 
But uh, and I try to post things to make people think a little bit. And I try to post mm -hmm. things that are humorous. And there's a lot of people that don't have a sense of humor now, which is too bad. But that's their problem, not mine. Yeah, I agree. Well, Kevin, thank you uh, for being with us for the second time. You. you and your wife are the only ones that have come on this show twice. Oh, cool. And, oh, I, and I must say, your first show that you and her did were the ones that had got me on YouTube the most views. I don't know what it's been like out in the, uh, the regular networks, but on YouTube it's gotten me by far the most views. So hopefully this will continue on this show. Cool. All right. Thank, thank, thank you, you Kevin. Thank you so much, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Seriously, how big was it? I'm telling you, it's humongous. So it was bigger than a castle? Totally. And when you're there, there's so many cool things to do that you forget about time. No way. That only happens in one place. Go ahead. Think bigger. Encourage TV. Family-friendly and faith-friendly content absolutely free. Subscribe today and watch hundreds of hours of content on our streaming channels. Visit EncourageTV.com today. Welcome back to Faith on Film. I want to thank you for tuning in to today's show. You know, with this pandemic that we're going through right now, a thing that you can do is take the time to watch some good Christian movies. And where can you do that at? Well, Parables, of course. At Parables TV, there's a lot of great movies, documentaries, reality shows, just a lot of great content for you and your family. And guess what? It's free. There's no subscription fee. Simply go to parables.tv and register. That's parables.tv. And of course, don't forget to write me. I'd like to hear from you. Write me at faithunfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithunfilmtv at gmail.com. And of course, you can always follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithunfilmtv. Until next week, take care. <laughs>